Welcome to Business Talks. I'm Lana Smith, your host, and we are into part two of our interview with Miss Robin Nance. She is a newscaster on KXLY. You have seen her in the mornings on Good Morning Northwest with uh, Derek and Mark Peterson. She comes into your in, into your homes at five o'clock in the morning. So early. I know, so <laughs> early. I don't know how you do it. But we just talked about um, <clears throat> being in community mm -hmm. on, and and yeah. how you came into broadcasting and, and this, this amazing journey that you've had. So I'm going to flip the script. We talked okay. a little bit about this. The media in today's culture. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are challenged with um, watching the media. Um, trying to decipher between news and opinion. We know mm -hmm. our big uh, national broadcasting mm -hmm. organizations, CNN, MSNBC, uh, Fox, Fox News, mm -hmm. um, and then you got ABC, NBC, CBS. Mm -hmm. And so people have come, it, it feels like people are not trusting um, the media mm -hmm. because it doesn't feel like <clears throat> people, uh, you're getting news, you're getting opinion. So it really, you look at a situation and, and you have to figure out where, where it's coming from, from somebody's personal experience. Mm -hmm. uh, on, the, on the local level, mm -hmm. I, you don't see that. I mean. Well, you hope not. Um, I think as we were talking in the first segment about just the, the advent of social media and the change, so much has changed. Uh, it's, simply with the start of cable news, mm -hmm. you know, that's where I think we started seeing some shifts. Um, I do think there is so much more distrust than ever before right now. No one will argue with that. I think that's the one thing we can all agree on. Um, and I, in my perspective, what it seems like from what I see is that people have a hard time differentiating between what is opinion and what is actual news. And in, and in some instances, there are lines crossed and people are using, you know, what they've heard as opinion as actual facts. And, and I think it does blur the lines. I think it, it clouds judgments. And, and I think that's where we're seeing so much of the unclarity. Mm -hmm. And so polarized. So much so. So polarized, the different yeah. networks. And depending on your, and really, it, in the past, it wasn't dependent on your political beliefs. Mm -mm. It you was, didn't watch the news because of your <clears throat> political beliefs. You watched the news because you felt that the news, they had integrity, they mm -hmm. giving you good information. Now, now, it seems like people watch the station that affiliates closest to their That tells them what lens. they want to hear. That's what, that's yeah. kind of what what it seems from from me yeah. and my experience and my the people in my circles it's i feel like people are gravitate to what they want to hear mm -hmm. and so like-minded they want to hear yeah, news that yeah. that resonates yeah. with what and they, they and a lot of times it's hard for people to you know just listen to what i would consider a normal newscast mm -hmm. which is not you know which i feel like is trying to be as unbiased as possible, which I really feel like local news is where it's at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but, um, you know, I, it's, I, I think people have a hard time then assuming that you don't have an angle, that you don't yes. have an agenda. Yeah. When and our, I, uh, It drives me crazy because our agenda is facts, giving you the facts, breaking down the stories that we, you know, our reporters are working all the time to bring you the best, most concise, clearest, you know, without an agenda, without an agenda, the, yes. the, you know, and going into a story without a preconceived notion about it. I think we try really hard to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. On So where do you get your news? So when mm -hmm. you're putting stories together yeah. or in the morning when you're yeah. getting ready and you're listening, where do you get your news? Well, p me personally, mm -hmm. me you personally, personally, I, um, well, I watch our news station mm -hmm. when I'm, you know, in the evenings and stuff, but when I get ready every morning, I listen to NPR, mm -hmm. um, on my drive into work, I listen to the BBC. Yes. I, and sometimes I'll come in and, and I, I recently had a story that, that I came in and it was written and I said, oh, you know, I actually heard that on my way in mm -hmm. that there was, you know, this piece of information, we should include that or we, you know, so 
our producers are the ones who are working day daily. Like our my morning show producer comes in at night and works all night long to put the show together. So he comes in at like eleven, wow. and so he's you know pulling information and all the stuff. And some you know stuff happens throughout that time. It's different time zones. It's you know what breaking whatever. So um, he might miss something or he might just not have seen it somewhere. And so it's kind of good to have other you know sources. But locally, for our people, a lot of our news stories come from just you, the viewer, you know, okay. calls, tips, emails, saying, hey, look into this, or did you know this was happening? And a lot of times, that's how we, we don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's how, you know, we find out. Well, and I think that's great that the community gets involved and, you know, yeah. To, yeah. to tip you off to something that, that maybe you didn't know. Yeah. How do you feel about, you know, I, I think we saw a, a, a great turn from the last administration mm -hmm. and the current administration, we saw a great turn in the the news networks. And um, how do you feel about that politi politicization and politicization? Mm -hmm. I'm, that is a real word. <laughs> is um, how do you feel about that in the news industry? Because now, again, like we're talking about, people choose a news network based on their political views. Mm. How, you've seen the change, mm -hmm. let's say in the last eight years. Mm -hmm. What does that do to the integrity, do you feel, of the news that people are receiving? I don't, I guess I don't understand the question exactly. Wondering with the turn. With okay, the, with, with the change with in politics. administration. With, yeah. Well, just that we saw, uh, we saw the polarization. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's the word, the polarization between the networks um, that that I personally had never seen before. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the last eight years, seeing that change and that turn. Yeah. And how, you know, how, how do you, how does that manifest when you're, when you're in the news industry? What, what do you think about that? Well, I think that being a local station is a lot different than being national. Mm -hmm. We we take our, our national news. We obviously aren't there in New York when something happens in New York. We aren't there in Washington, D.C. when something happens. So we or rely on Kabul. Or, or yeah. yes, or yeah. on the border or mm -hmm. on, yeah, at, at an airport in Afghanistan. So we have to rely on the people who are there, mm -hmm. meaning our affiliate is ABC. So we okay. rely on ABC. We also do can take stories from CNN. Um, and use their stuff. Uh, so we rely on them. What, they're, okay. what they get, gather is they're seeing it. They're the mm -hmm. witness. Um, so for us as a local station, it's a lot different. I mean, granted, we are affiliated with it. So, you know, either people like it or they don't like it. Mm -hmm. They have an opinion about it. Mm -hmm. They all do. Everyone does. Everybody uh, whether, <laughs> you know, whether, whatever it is. And, and that's okay. You are all mm -hmm. entitled to your opinions. Um, so it's hard. And with the changing of administration, we saw and you just look at the different personalities and how how each person, if you look at, you know, President Obama to President Trump to President Biden, how they act and, you know, interact with the public, how they interact with other countries, everything's different. Mm -hmm. So when I, have, you know, I know you kind of asked before, you know, about the treatment of each president. Well, that's that's tough. You can't. It's almost like your children. You can't treat your children equally if they're misbehaving in a certain way because each child reacts different or each child maybe, you know, you, you have to almost tailor your, what you, how you deal with them to how they act. I don't know. That's maybe a reach, but, but each of the presidents have had their own way of dealing with the public. Um, Different communication styles. 100%. I mean, really. I mean you're seeing mm -hmm. like night and day all mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. We're seeing some good, some bad, some, you know, all of it. And so it's, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge when you're one of, when one of your presidents attacks our entire, you know, um, our field, what, what we hold in such high regards that is protected under the first amendment. When, when you have a president that attacks that, it's very, very difficult, you know, then obviously to get information from that president, obviously, um, and it, just, it makes everything so much difficult, more difficult. So. Well, and, and that's interesting. I don't think we, growing up, 
you know, we didn't see that. You know, we, of course, our scope our, was limited. Our yes. scope with, with uh, Walter Cronkite yes, um, yes. or Dan Rather mm -hmm. was so different because we didn't have the internet. Yes. The internet's changed everything for it the has. News. It has, Everything. absolutely. And the misinformation, the disinformation mm -hmm. that's out there and the sources where it's coming from, most of the time when people are quoting things, they may not even realize where that information is coming from. Yeah. And it's hard to combat, you mm -hmm. know, when, when we're out there trying to, you know, say the facts, just yeah. say the facts, you know, when we're talking about people who are in the hospital that are unvaccinated, mm -hmm. That's not me making something up. That is the facts coming from our hospitals. You know, um, it's it's things like that. And then when it's like, you know, talking about the vaccines and we're telling you what the medical community is telling mm -hmm. us. They are the experts mm -hmm. who are doing that. You know, it's not our opinion. It is that it is what we're being told. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, have opinions about all of that yeah. stuff. And it's hard. It's really hard to to just, you know, I think for people to just accept, that's what it is. Yeah. Well, and with the news, though, don't you think that's that's your job? You give the facts, and then each person um, receives it, mm -hmm. thinks, processes it, and either you know it it aligns with what what information they know or experience they've had. You know, every one of us looks at the news through a different lens. Our, yeah, it's our true. Own personal lens for sure, and so, our experiences. Yes. Yeah. And so. But going back to just where the media has, um, you know, people have stopped trusting the media. Well, and I think that's where you go. That's, yeah. well, and calling it's it, hard. calling, lumping everything as the media is yes. problematic. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. are news stations who have really high ethical standards. You can't lump us with the media being, you know, I'm trying to think well, of other opinion, places, but, we're thinking, but, but, but yeah, you're, opinion, people you're that are Rachel on, Maddow's mm -hmm. and you're Tucker Carlson's. Mm -hmm. You, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not the same. It's, you cannot mm -hmm. lump us all in as the media. And that's very problematic. Mm -hmm. And when, cause, because if you also say the media, you're talking about social media. True. And social media is, it's insane. It's, it's you know, yeah, craziness. It it's, it it's, you know, and people on TikTok doing bizarre things. That's media also. Yeah. So I think it's very, very dangerous to just say. You know, kinda, all it's the convoluted. There, there's no, there's a lot of gray area now. There's, there's just a lot of melding of like yeah. you're talking about yeah. the different sources. And I just hope people, and I know we have so many smart people out here. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that if nothing else, people will just stop and think about where they're getting their information okay. and then, um, and don't share something. And I constantly, even to my relatives, mm -hmm. I'll say, well, if you had looked at the, the, the link of where, you know, look at the mm -hmm. link of where that came from or, or, you know, don't share that until you check this out. Yes. Go, go to, you know, look it up, look for other sources. Yes. And I know, cause it's something, if it's sensational, you're like, oh my gosh, look at yes. this, blah, 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 share that because I want everybody to know that this craziness happened mm -hmm. or this craziness could happen to you. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute. Somebody in Russia made that up and yeah. to get you fired up, to get everybody fired up. Mm -hmm. It's it's just very that true. easy. It's just very that easy. true. You know, and I, I think I would hope that that's always my first question, especially with my kids, my three adult kids. My middle child is my free spirit and has some very different opinions at age 23. Mm -hmm. And so my, my, I'm constantly like, what is your source? Yeah. What is your source? You yeah. need to look at the source. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, you know, XYZ skateboarder.com. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Okay, Dylan, that's not going to work. Yeah, okay, yeah. Let's, so, think, let's think. Let's think that. <laughs> so I do think it's interesting with the millennials. I, I do yep. think that's mm -hmm. that's a big switch. Um, yeah, for that sure. they're getting their information and in, in, and some you know there's a lot of millennials out there who are gathers and mm -hmm. do their due diligence. Due, due, due <laughs> diligence. I just know that I have a few millennials in my family and. You know, they just will come up with stuff and I'll go, yeah. Where, what's your source? What's yeah. your source? We've had and some so, interesting conversations with my young adult mm -hmm. children as well. And it's, it's eye-opening, but it's also fascinating because I think they have such a different perspective than when I was their age. Yes. It's a, well, it's a totally different world also, mm -hmm. but it's, it's fun when they, I feel like start putting the pieces together, yes. you know, and, and you see the connect. Yeah. Or yes. And you see, and I'll, I, it, 
even conversations among them saying, I've heard one of them say, well, how did you know that? Where did, mm -hmm. you know, where did you learn that? And then have them try to explain it right or wrong or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's, I really enjoy that part of the parenting thing. Yes. <laughs> but there, there's so many more challenging yes. things <laughs> than they don't do. enjoy. But. If, if that's the worst, you know, yeah. that oh. you're coming up against with, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it? It'll be good. <laughs> well, I, I find it interesting. I know that's a topic that we could talk about all night. And, mm. um, but we just encourage people just know on the local level that our news sources are, they are verified, they're trustworthy, mm -hmm. there's integrity in what we, Robin yes. broadcasts on KXLY. And uh, please follow her on Facebook. Are you on Insta? I am on Insta. No, I'm not good on Insta. I'm not either. I go, I go there, but yeah, not, I mostly just to look at other people's cool stuff. Yeah. I don't have... <laughs> you know, there's that demographic thing too, I right? I need but, to up my Insta yeah. game though. You are right. Yeah. <laughs> no, but follow Robin on Facebook. I'm on, on Twitter also. Twitter. I'm better Twitter. Instagrammer. Um, or she's going to get better at Instagram. I'll, I'll try. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to her after we're done and give her a, give me yeah. some tips. I, well, I yeah. have, I've got a really good one where you, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Anyways. So yeah, please follow Robin. She is, uh, one of our family members here in Spokane. She joins us every morning in our homes at 5 a.m. Um, on KXLY. So thank you for coming Thanks on. For me. And it was I a lot of fun. Kind of tough things to talk about, but That's I think great. we need to talk about it. You're absolutely right. Will you we come do. back on? I would love to. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. You know I will. Well, yeah. <laughs> well we're friends. We're friends. So <laughs> I write her a check every week to be my friend and Stop get her it. on here. So no, it's usually drinks. It's in exchange for mm -hmm. beverages. I won't I neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> Okay. Then. <laughs> Anyways, we thank you guys for coming and joining us today. Um, my name's Lana Smith, and this is Business Talks. We'll see you later. The world has changed a lot in 50 years, and Kimley Haygood has changed with it. We still provide our customers with the highest level of service, whether it's financing, construction management, property management and maintenance, leasing or sales. Our team is here to help you make the best decisions with your real estate.